James Sykes, CEO, President, Director of Baseload Energy, here with Cameron McKay, VP Exploration Development, Baseload Energy. We have just released more drill hole results from the Accio drill program this summer. Very excited that we do have more uranium mineralization and especially high grade mineralization. But let's put some things into context for you, the viewer, shareholders, investors, and just general public, just so you, you get an understanding of where we're coming from. Forward looking statements, very quick summary. Between August and October of last year, we completed our first drill program on the project and we discovered the Accio, Accio zone. Four drill holes into Accio for 1600 meters, and that does include an abandoned drill hole. Three of those drill holes did intersect uranium mineralization, so it's good intersection rate. Two of those drill holes also intersected high grade uranium, so that's even better. And the results that we've seen so far are comparable with other Athabasca uranium deposits. Now, Cameron and I did a video last month, uh, December, and we basically showed how the results from the first hole, AK2101, are comparable with those other, other deposits. So if this is your first time watching our baseload videos, I highly recommend that you go watch that video as well. Of course, we love high grade. We wanna see more high grade, but this is what Athabasca is known for. Athabasca is known for very visible high grade uranium. So we just basically wanna find more. And of course the core looks beautiful. The core is highly altered, it's mineralized. This is what we're looking for. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Cameron, we do have new results. Can you please update everybody with, uh, with the results? Yeah, and like James said, um, you know, if, for anybody who didn't watch the previous video, please go back and check this that out. Uh, a lot of this content is going to be, uh, you know, um, uh, reiterating some of the points that we made in that previous uh, video that we put out. So we'll go through uh, AK2101. That was our discovery drill hole. We did a whole uh, video on that one before. 0.13 weight percent uranium over 15.5 meters, starting at 134. 3 meters downhole, and that included two high grade intervals, one of 1.29 weight percent uranium over 0.5 meters, and, point, and another interval of 0.66 weight percent uh, uranium over 0.5 meters again. Um, hole two didn't it, uh, intersect any significant uranium results, but we'll talk about that one and why that's not something to be spooked by in uh, the coming slides. Drill hole AK2103 returned 0.24 weight percent U308 over 5.5 meters, beginning at 128.6 meters. And this included a high grade interval of 0.67 weight percent over 0.5 meters at 131.6. And, and for this too, like I can, I would like to point out as well, like we easily could have, you know, grabbed a 10 centimeter sample off of this and got a number that was north of 1%. But for statistical purposes, we'd like to keep our samples at uh, 0.5 but we do consider this to be a high grade intercept. Um, and then for whole AK2104, we in, uh, intercepted some more encouraging results, 0.17 weight percent over one meter, starting at 95 meters down hole, and another uh, intersection of 0.24 weight percent over two meters at 99 meters. So we're very encouraged by these results. Things are looking good and uh, we expect to find more. Yeah, the results are definitely encouraging. One thing I'll quickly note though is high grade mineralization, high grade uranium mineralization, we're classifying that as 0 0.5 as the global average grade is about 0 0.1, 0.15% U308. So we're figuring anywhere between three to five times as much the, the global average is should be considered high grade mineralization. And that's what we're defining high grade as. So yeah, we went, went over this grade thickness thing in the last presentation as well. Um, and so for uh, people who missed that one, please go back and check that out as well. And we'd like to point out here too, uh, we were discussing uh, just before we started rolling here, that uh, for our American listeners, um, that when GTs are reported uh, in uh, south of the border, uh, they're often in, uh, reported using feet. And so you could have a really, you know, a high GT of say 100, which is kind of like the gold standard, which is what we're looking for, you know, 10 meters of 10% or something like that. But, you know, we got, uh, we're, we're reporting everything in meters. So, you know, if, if, if we were doing a, a, a grade thickness in feet, these numbers would be a lot higher. So anyway, just with that as an aside, uh, drill hole AK2101 uh, returned a grade thickness of over two, hole three returned a grade thickness of over, or of 1.32. And 04 had uh, two 
um, non like non consecutive. We wouldn't be able to consider these like a continuous run. But two grade thicknesses, one uh, over a meter of 0.17, and another one over two meters of uh, 0.48. And if you sum those two up, you get 0.65. So uh, some really uh, interesting uh, grade thicknesses off of our inaugural uh, drill program that we're really excited about. So we're seeing diminishing GTs as we progress uh, drilling wise to the east. You know, is that something to be cautious about? Not necessarily. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at this. So um, yeah, like we, we showed this slide in the last presentation as well. And yeah, like a lot of these, these uranium systems, they, they're a bit spotty. Like you can be right next to something really, really uh, attractive. And um, if you don't drill that next hole, you know, 15, 25 meters uh, on a step out, you, you could miss something that's really, really important. And I'll make a note here. If you look at this, the red circle in the middle there, on the three last dots down there, you go from green, which is the same GTs that we're seeing, and then all of a sudden you there's a blue, which is not considered mineralization on on this on a tamarack. So yeah, you're you're right next door next door. That looks like a 10 meter step out, and it's all of a sudden mineralization is gone. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's nothing to get spooked about if you have a hole that that misses, uh, you know, within a uh, one of these mineralized systems. It's just it's just how it goes. Yeah, MacArthur, same story. Always here. love, yeah, always yeah. love <laughs> comparing everything to MacArthur. That's the gold standard of Athabasca uranium. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same thing. You look at that. You look at these circles in black. You're especially the ones on the left. You've got two drill holes there that are less than five gt similar to what we're seeing and then all of a sudden you're boom you're right yeah. next to their their zone two deposit so it's impressive yeah all right so the main zone of mineralization this is where we are seeing the the, the more consecutive widths with the higher grades about 90 to 125 meters below surface so that's excellent that's that's our at the basket 2.0 strategy that's the that's our open pit type of strategy. And yeah, that's when, right. Yeah, when when you look at these when you look at these three holes where we've intersected, uh, that's about forty five meters wide, from hole four to hole one. That's not thin by any means necessary. No, nope. two of these two of these drill holes had high grade uranium. It's the system is still open to the east. Now again, we're talking about hole two, which is the black line on the far right. That's quite a ways off from where we could drill. So this this green line that just showed up, that's a 25 meter step out from hole one. And you can see where that would plot up. And that, you know, if, if things are increasing in grade and thickness as we go to the east, that's a pretty sexy target. Yeah, I mean, 25 meters, like, and then, then you're adding, you know, uh, you know, moving that from 45 to 60 meters uh, in width, right? So. Let's hope that we find something that's uh, in, in that location. Yeah, exactly. And alternatively, if we go up dip on this, on the apparent system, then another 25 meter step out. Although things look like they were kind of pinching out uh, towards full four. Again, it's, as Cameron mentioned, it's these pinch and swell type of things. And there could be uh, mineralization, mineralization can just kick right back up again. Yeah, that's right. Uh, is the next slide the, the yeah. section from yeah so yeah so this this is the this uh comparison between uh, accio and griffin and you can see like we talked about this last time but we'll, we'll reiterate it here too like these basement hosted uranium systems are you know they're they they form in these ore shoots or pods and like it's not uncommon to have you know fairly significant gaps between these pods and so when you miss on a hole it doesn't mean you're done going exploring down dip or up dip or a long strike. I mean, like you, you, you have to do a lot of drilling to really understand these things, and no one should get spooked by a, a, a drill hole that that seemingly misses um, in a, you know uh, a perspective area. So I think we're good. I think we're really good to, to build on on that upper zone, especially. Yeah. I've got a I've got a unique story about these ones, and we'll we'll really get to that. But what are your thoughts on this? So we've got all these lower zones. It's significant. I, I haven't seen if these if we didn't have that upper zone and we just had these lower zones, what would you feel about about Accio? I wouldn't be nearly as excited. Um, these ones to me, 
I mean, my gut feeling is that this, these ones are early. They're hosted in this, I don't know, I don't want to get too technical on it, on everybody, but like they're, they're hosted in these granitic rocks that were subject to an early alteration event that I don't, I think is far predates the post Athabasca uranium event. So my gut feeling is, is this is early, um, elevated, you know, concentrated uranium values, but I don't think it has anything to do with the post Athabasca story. I could be wrong about that, but, uh, and we've taken a bunch of interesting thin section samples for academic purposes to try and figure that out. But, uh, um, yeah, like, I mean, it, it could turn into something. This could be like the, the basal, you know, like this, this might extend up, you know, a long, a long strike um, to the north or the south, um, and then move into the meta, uh, the meta sediments. And this just might be like the tail bottom end of, 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 uh, an ore shoot. That's perfectly possible. Um, but, uh, we, we, don't, we just don't know enough right now, I guess is the main thing. Okay. I would, I would agree with you on the early mineralization, but I would also say that there's uh, a little bit more to it. Uh, the reason why I say this is this, it just reminds me of Rough Rider so much that we had, similar styles of mineralization when you're in the i guess the archean nice which this would be pretty well the same same type of rock and yeah. seeing that same green type of alteration there what, what we were calling calc silicate uh, it's just i've seen these things in other places and they're, they're sometimes you're not too far off sometimes they're not associated with uranium but the fact that we're seeing all these little sniffs like that's i've drilled a lot of drills in my career and if you'd have three drill holes like that where even though even though they're little sniffs they're exciting now hole three hole three had something extra particularly interesting the so after we're done drilling a hole we will send down a tool called the downhole gamma probe which measures the radioactivity of the rocks down hole hole three had the highest peak of of the gamma probe, it blew away. It was, I think it was about what, uh, 45,000 counts. And on hole one in the high grade, where we had over 1% U308, we're getting up to 30 counts. So that's, that's a 50% increase on your mineralization, but we're not seeing the grades. Cameron, can you kind of explain what that might mean? Yeah, I mean, again, like sometimes these things are, are a little bit spotty and <laughs> You, you only bring up to surface, of, you know, like a very tiny sliver of what's down uh, in the subsurface. So to me, that tells me that, you know, we were probably right next to something and we might have just skimmed the edge of it. Right. So yeah. uh, I think that there's probably something more interesting down there that we that we miss, but not by much. No, not by much at all. And so if, uh, I just I drew, drew this one up. If we assume that, well, we know the rocks are dipping to the north and northeast. If you know, if we assume this is a 25 meter step out or even a 10 meter step out, 25 meter step out, it's possible that there could be a beautiful nugget of high grade uranium just sitting there. Obviously, we don't know because we'd have to drill more, but uh, just that, that potential, that, that one single peak, uh, well, it was more than a single peak, but it was that those gamma probe readings were, were phenomenal. I, yeah, I was and just surprised so when we got the results back. Yeah, no, it was it was really interesting. And just so everyone noticed the, when James clicked through on that slide, he basically extended the extent of our meta sedimentary package um, as a hypothetical. Um, and so these things like the, the this meta sedimentary unit, which is typically our host rock, they, I mean, they, they pinch and swell, swell both along strike and down dip. And so what he's like uh, in, inferring here is that, you know, like there is the potential for this unit to swell. Um, and for us to find something more interesting, uh, both along strike and down dip. All right. So that's basically it. That's what we've got so far, just on the uranium side of things, on the, the mineralization that we've seen at Accio so far. We've got some other updates that we'll be we'll be sending across these uh, these webinars and across our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we know we're getting a lot of good feedback from this, from you, the viewers, so we will continue to educate you and provide you updates on a timely basis. Uh, alteration is, the alteration that we're seeing here is quite unique. I'm still kind of crunching away on that. Uh, the structure in the area is absolutely amazing. 
and we'll we'll start putting all of these out and do a couple more videos. Uh, we've got the Beckett target area results. We just have to finalize them and really and put something together similar to this. Uh, Beckett was our original target area that we went to prior to Accio. We really liked what we saw there, and I'm I'm still bullish on the the Beckett area, uh, just for other reasons, which. And then we're hopefully starting the winter drill program, Cameron. I know you've been you've been crushing it hard, man. The past two months, let's say more so. Yeah. Not, we're not, ho winter. not hopefully we are we are starting a winter drill program very very soon. Uh, we'll be mobilizing uh, to the north, and mm. yeah, getting those rigs turning and hopefully you know producing some really uh, good and interesting results. Absolutely, love it. Let's find some more high grade. Let's do it. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cameron, for your time, and yeah, it's, I hope the I hope the progress goes well up north and everything goes off without a hitch. Which for anybody else who's interested to learn more about baseload, please uh, check out our videos on YouTube, and you can also reach out to me via email. I'm always happy to hear from, from new people and and uh, investors with baseload. Thank you very much. Happy New Year.